Hey guys, it's Erin. Happily we go here and I am super excited today because we are going to make some paper bag journals. I've had a bazillion paper bags hanging around my house and I thought it is finally time that I make a journal. So we're going to make this one here today. We'll do a whole start to finish on how to make it and it's going to be featured in PB and Journal Tuesdays, which is a new series I'll be featuring here on my YouTube channel. Every Tuesday we will do a uh, page in our paper bag journal. So if you would like to create your own journal and journal along with me on Tuesdays, then just keep watching. Okay, we're going to keep it easy today. First thing we need is a paper bag. You only need one. This is from Whole Foods 365, um, but any paper bag will do. We're going to need some paints, any paints you want. Um, like I said, you can get crazy or not. Of course, I'm going to break out some Lindy's, use some uh, spray inks, and then also some gesso, our lovely friend gesso. And then some tools. I have a little squeegee thing, an old brush, and of course scissors. And then you know I'm going to be using my wedges for the paint stuff. So if you have any little sponges, you could use those or some cheapy wedgies like I have here. And stencils. So break out your stencils, people. You don't need a lot, just a couple of them. We're just going to add a little bit of character to the pages, not too much because, of course, we're going to paint over them. But that's it. So here we go. We're going to start by opening up our bag. So get your hand in there get it all opened, and then we're gonna grab our scissors and cut right down the middle of our bag. Then we're gonna cut open these flaps, so just slice along the side here till you get to the very edge of the bottom of the bag. Go ahead and repeat that on the other side. Then we're going to open it up flat here and you can skip this step if you like. If you want to have a little extra um, texture on yours, you can, but I'm going to go ahead and remove the handles on the bag. These ones are just glued on, so I'm just gonna ever so gently peel them off, and we're gonna take off both of those handles. Okay, now that we have both of the handles off of our bag, see I have it opened up here, I can't fit all of it in the frame, so we're just gonna work on one half of the bag, but I'm gonna do one whole side of the bag at once. We're gonna grab our gesso, and I have my little squeegee tool, and I'm just going to mush it all over the side of the bag here. Now you can get as decorated as you want. You can cover all of it with the gesso. You can do less gesso if you want. It's really up to you. And while the gesso is still wet, I'm gonna grab those Lindy sprays and spray them onto it and then kind of mush it around a little bit. What this will do is help it from reactivating. It's going to uh, soak into the gesso and kind of glue it into place. So that's what I'm doing here. Now I haven't fully dried it, but I'm going to take this old crusty brush, isn't it so pretty? And we're going to kind of carve into the gesso. Now where it's still really wet, it's going to be um, deeper and not as deep where it's a little bit more dry. And now we'll grab just some of those inks, any of the paints that I want to use, throw them on there. I don't want it all covered, just, you know, hints of color here and there. Now I'm going to go ahead and dry it, or at least mostly dry to the touch. Depends on how long you want to wait for paint to dry. So I have a palette pad here and I'm just going to throw on some of the paint and use my wedge and just all over the place, willy nilly, not doing a whole stencil, I'm going to go ahead and stencil all over the bag. Just randomly because you know these pages are going to be broken up. But we just want hints of different color and some of the patterning. I'd also like to mention that you want to keep consistent with the colors that you use. So whichever colors you're going to use on this front side, you can use them 
on the other side as well so that way your journal is um, cohesive with color and you know the theme kind of runs throughout the whole thing. All right, now that we have both sides of our journal done, as you can see, mine are front and back completed, we are going to fold our journal up into its book. So if you haven't guessed by now, this middle section is going to be our cover. So we're gonna take the bottom piece and fold it up into the middle, give it a good press, and then take that and fold it back onto itself. You can line it up with the bottom or the top where the little journal is and then press it down as well. Now we'll take the top flap and we're going to fold it over what we just folded, give it a good press, and then take that piece and fold it back onto itself. You can line it up with the top of the journal and then go ahead and press it really good. Now there's a little fold here. This is where those flappies were in the middle. We're going to save those and then that way you can either, well you could cut them off if you wanted, but we can make pockets with them or we can just have extra flap outs because I love flapping out. And then fold our journal in half and as you can see it already has almost its own little binding area which is awesome. So we're just going to give that a little bit of fold and a press. And then what we're going to do is just take a pencil and I'm going to draw two lines down that middle binding. This is going to give us a little bit thicker binding so we can really get it all chunky and, you know, use lots of texture or whatever we want on the inside. So I'm just going to guesstimate here where I want my sewing lines to be. It doesn't have to be perfect or straight. You can measure if you want, but I'm going to eyeball it and then we'll go ahead and sew it up. So as you can see, I got my stitches done and our book binding is together. And now we have our little flappy thing. See, this is where our folds were. So we're gonna go ahead and cut our pages. Just grab your scissors again and we're just gonna cut along the fold on all of the pages to separate them out. While you're cutting your pages, make sure you get as close as you can to the stitching, but don't cut the stitches or your book is gonna fall apart. Now on the first page where our binding is, there's one little fold. You can cut that if you want, but I think I wanna keep it and I'm gonna have this flap and make a pocket. So I have a pocket on the both covers of my book. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other pages, but leave that one last pocket. As you can see, I left that last flap there so we can make another pocket, but all of our pages are cut. Now I'm just debating which side I want to be my cover, and I think I'm gonna go with this one. So we have our little flap over there, and I'm gonna make that an outside pocket, and we can go ahead and fold our little flip outs in here. Now you could cut these off if you want and use them as tags, or you could leave them in and make more pockets. You know, at this point, whatever you wanna do, however you wanna uh, make your journal is up to you. Alright, so now I'm going to run back over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew up the sides here to make that little front pocket and then also it'll give us a little pocket in our front cover and then one on our back cover as well. Ta-da! There it is and it's a crazy stitchy mess and I love it. We have the pocket on the front and then we have a big pocket on the inside here for goodies. Um, I did not sew any other pages on the inside. I wanted to leave it open for our Tuesday playtime so whatever I felt I wanted to do that day I could do. Um, so we're just flipping through here. And then I also left that flap on the back. I left it open too, but I did sew the pocket on and I just sewed along the top there and that gave us that extra pocket. And then I did promise you guys I would show you the other journal I made. Now this one, I used fabric for the cover. 
Um, I just matte mediumed it on and then sewed the stitching as well. There's our front pocket again. I made this journal exactly the same way that I did the other one. So just the one paper bag um, and sewed up the sides and we still have the pockets there. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today and making a paper bag journal. I hope you will stay tuned for the PB and Journaled Tuesdays um, and we can just get fun and create and messy and just explore. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me and until next time, Happy creating.